Well, we have so, this idea. We're going to call it Genesis of a Fishery. How long ago did you start stocking this place? All right, so it was probably a dozen years ago or more. Uh, a friend of mine and I started bringing bass in, started bringing bluegill in, and had the idea to try to make this, you know, a great neighborhood fishery for the kids. Um, and it just never took root. Um, there were people coming in and taking the fish back out, catching them. You know, there was a guy in the neighborhood who was bringing a bucket down here and just throwing them, throwing bass in the bucket, undersized bass. So we kind of gave up on the idea, and it just never, you know, it just never took off. There's a couple big ones, though. We know for a fact. Right. We know there's a you couple know for studs. A I know for a fact. But there's also a lot of small fish here, too. Back, I can tell you back when we began to stock this originally, I actually spoke with FWC to find out what the rules were yeah. about bringing in bass from other locations. And they said, it's fine as long as you stick with your bag limits and size limits. So as long as we follow the laws, anything that we are legally allowed to keep, we can, you know, uh, relocate into a different body of water. Yeah. They have no problem with that. But it's got to be a legal fish and, you know, you got to stay within the right amount. And that's one of the things that we need to, kind of we need to do. There's a, yeah. there's a game, not really, we're, we're game planning this as we go. We know we have to do some cleanup around the pond. Right. We know there's some kids that just are taking advantage of leaving all of their crap everywhere. Correct. So we know we need to do a cleanup. We know we need to get some, some forage fish in here. Bluegill, shiners, wild shiners. Correct. I got a spot where I used to be able to catch uh, real nice size wild shiners. Um, I used to be able to catch them consistently every time I went there. So I went and checked it out the other day actually and I think we can still get to it. So um, that would be a good place to start. Yeah. So. Well I think we need to, we know, we know for a fact that there's a, there's a lot of fish in here. There's a lot of bass in here. Um, at the right times, this place is, is pretty good. I mean, we come down here, we've been down here every, every weekend for the last three or four weeks. Right. And generally, you've catched three or four, I catch three or four, um, the neighborhood kids are catching three or four. It'll be great to, to watch the whole process of how the genesis of the fishery happens. From where we start now to a year from now, probably. Right. It'll probably take a year or more to really see much in the way of change, I would think. Yeah. yeah. I think when we start getting like the, the shiners and stuff, I think they're going to be eating right here. Right I think off. so too. Yeah, I think once we start dumping bait along the edges here, the, the bass are just going to come charging in and we're just going to see them exploding on on what we put in there. So I'm sure only a small percentage of the, the bait that we release in here is going to actually survive. Yes. And, and, you know, propagate. So. But that's the whole thing. We're going to have, we're going to put it in waves. We're not going to just dump 20 million of these things. Well, we could, but we, it might not be the best thing to do. Right. We're going to try to make it so that that not only can maybe hopefully some of them live, but that hopefully they'll start to reproduce and and help this little this little pond. And we know the water clarity is really good. It's very clear. Very clear. We know that unfortunately there's a lot of weeds, but there's a lot of lily pads too well, that really help the help the fish. The vegetation is why there's fish in here. Yes. If this was just a barren pond, we wouldn't have the population that's in there now. The the reason that they're not bigger is the only thing they've got to feed on is you know small fry and like the dragonfly. Well, what you're going to see Jeff and I do over the next few weeks, we're going to try to do something every every month. Yeah. Uh, once we get some of this craziness that's going on in the world away from us. We're right. going to start off by getting 300 one to three inch bluegill that are being donated to us. That'll be perfect. That'll be a perfect start. It will be a good start. I think before then I'm going to hit up one other bait shop and see if I can't get us a bunch of medium shiners, maybe three to five hundred of them, and try to have them bring them over and let's just show us stocking it and then show the hopefully we can show some of us fishing and see if we can see a difference in a year from now yeah i would love to be able to come down here and fairly consistently catch three to four pound bass that would be fantastic because right now we're catching what the yeah, 10 one, to 14 yeah. inch bass yeah but we know that they're right around the 12 yeah, inch size correct. 
I would say that they're they're that last they're year. They're, they're last pounds. year major league fishing size. There you go. That's how we'll put it. Now we want we want them to be bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that there's a nine pounder in here. Yeah, that was a beast. You must be eating the one pounders. <laughs> well, I can tell you that fish um, at nine pounds didn't have any belly on it at all. It looked like it was starving. I wonder if somebody released it in here recently. Maybe one of these kids that we see from the neighborhood coming in here every once in a while. Maybe they brought it in from somewhere else. Because I can tell you that's one of the problems that I had when we were stocking it in the past. Was that I'd bring in some decent sized fish and I would catch them again later. Fairly certain it was the same fish and they would just be skinny. They have no bellies on them. Yeah. So they didn't have enough food to eat. Yeah. Well, we're gonna give them more food. Yeah. And we're gonna, we'll clean up this place and we'll make it a good, better fishery for us, but we'll also make it a better fishery for all the kids in this neighborhood. Because quite honestly, this, this pond gets a lot of pressure. Every it time does. we're here, there's two or three kids fishing. Right. There were a couple kids here today. Yeah, the girl was out fishing us. Yes, she was. Yeah. So. <laughs> It'll be a fun project for sure. Yeah, we're so. gonna have fun with this. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see us, the whole progression. You'll see us do some fishing. You're gonna see us doing some non-fishing. You'll see us doing some cleaning up. But I think what, and, and if anyone has any suggestions, we'd love to hear the suggestions. I've got a buddy, Jeff Holland, I'm gonna ask to come out one day. Okay. He's a biologist of plants. And uh, I think he might be able to help us figure out what we're doing, if we need, what we need to do and what we don't need to do. Sounds great. But I think we get the bait in here, we clean up. Mm -hmm. I think that alone is gonna help it. Right. It's gonna and be I fun. think if, if you plan on releasing a video about once every month, I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of work yeah. in between those videos. Yeah, you see you me every stuff Saturday. Going on every week. Yeah, you see, but, you've been seeing me every Saturday for weeks now. Right. I mean, exactly. we haven't seen each other for like seven months. Now we see each other every Saturday. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. And I appreciate you helping me with this, by the way. Oh, you bet. So uh, I would have liked to have seen this turned into a better fishery years ago. So if we can do it now, that would be better late than ever. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of kids that fish it. Right. More so than ever. So yeah. It'll be great for something to create something awesome for the whole neighborhood. So, yeah, we could have a lot of fun with this pond. So. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun. All I gotta do is stay with us. This is episode one. We just wanted to talk about what we're gonna do, Jeff and I are gonna do. Um, you can check out Jeff's channel, Jeff Hammer Fishing, on YouTube too. That's right, yeah. And you can check that out, and I'll give this to you. You can post it on your channel, and I'll post it on our channel too. The brothers. Okay, All that's right. it. Check us out. Episode two, we'll start filming stuff here, but you'll see it soon. Thanks guys for watching. See you soon.